Hi, I'm Les Thompson, and it's Christmas time in Central Europe. In fact, today is Christmas Day. Last night was very special. They had their traditional Christmas European dinner, and then after dinner, the children became very excited because they heard a tinkling of the bell, and they knew that baby Jesus had come, and he'd left for them a little present. Well, the good ones, anyway. And today they'll be out here and they'll be very excited playing with their new toys. Yes, it's magical. There's a drop of snow about, but apart from the snow, there's something else in the air. It's spiritual. Yes, it is religious, but you get caught up in it. It's something that we seem to be losing at home. There's the time leading into Christmas, Advent, and the time between today, Christmas Day, and New Year's Day is also a time of celebration, upholding all those wonderful traditions. It really is very special, Christmas time in Central Europe. Of course, this time of year was a special time of year in Europe even before the birth of Christ. Feasting and other winter celebrations have been traced back to the Celts, the Druids and the Romans in December. When the pagans commemorated the fading of the sun god from their ancient world and tried desperately to appease him. Celts used to honour the sun god by bringing a large log indoors, which in some parts were then used for the bonfire that would see human sacrifices burnt as an offering to have the sun god return. The Druids were heavily involved in tree worship and are said to have originated the hanging of gifts on trees because they believed the tree was the giver of all good things. They also believed that mistletoe was sacred and they dedicated mistletoe to the goddess of love. The Roman celebration was the observance of Saturnalia, the tribute to Saturn as the god of sowing at the time of the winter solstice, marking the entry into the coldest time of the year. It's believed this festival was the merging of more ancient Egyptian and Persian traditions, which, once the harvest was over, focused on asking the gods for the protection of the winter crops. In ancient Rome, this meant also honouring the goddess of plenty, with the Apalia festival in mid-December, and finally on December 25th, staging the Sol Invictus, or the Festival of the Unconquered Sun. The people feasted, gave gifts, and decorated their homes with greenery. The usual order of the year was suspended, grudges and quarrels forgotten, wars interrupted or at least postponed, businesses, courts and schools closed. Rich and poor were equal, slaves were served by masters, and children headed the family. Merriment of all kinds prevailed, and a mock king, the Lord of Misrule, was crowned, and candles and lamps chased away the spirits of darkness. Replacing these pagan festivals of the winter solstice with the Christian festival of Christmas on December 25th was finally recognised in the year 336 AD. There are some legacies today of the Roman festivals. An example of how peace was observed, even though a war was in progress, is the incident which occurred on Christmas Eve 1914, when the firing from the German trenches suddenly stopped and a German brass band began playing Christmas carols. Early on Christmas morning, the German soldiers came out of their trenches, calling to the Allies with shouts of Merry Christmas. The Allied soldiers leapt from their trenches and shook hands with the Germans. The truce lasted a few days and the two sides even exchanged gifts of cigarettes and plum puddings and apparently sang carols and songs together and even played a game of soccer. Christmas is now very much a Christian event and many of the traditions the world has embraced come from the German-speaking nations and the former German-speaking nations. One of the most important of these is the time of Advent which is a religious celebration in preparation for the arrival or advent of Das Christkind or Christ Child. On the fourth Sunday before Christmas, families set up an Advent wreath, an evergreen wreath with four candles representing the four Sundays. There are also Advent calendars with 24 windows, 
which opened to reveal symbols and scenes from the Christmas story. But Advent also marks the setting up of the Chris Kindlemarkt in countries such as Germany, Austria and the Czech Republic. These are colourful markets with Christmas goodies such as gingerbread and fruit bread and almonds and sugar goodies, plus the warm glue vine, the heated wine, to keep the frost off your cheeks. While Advent is a kind of Christmas countdown, other things happen as part of the December traditions. The figure Coca-Cola gave us as Santa Claus stems from the legendary bishop of the city of Myra, but in Europe has nothing to do with Christmas Day itself. For centuries he's been known in Europe as St. Nicholas or St. Nicholas or Santa Claus, and on the eve of December 6, the day commemorating him, he visits homes with the gifts for the children. St. Nicholas, dressed usually in his fine robes, has a companion, an evil-looking figure representing the devil, and sometimes an angel. And the trio go from home to home in the villages. This custom comes from 16th century Holland, where the children left out wooden shoes or clogs filled with straw and food for the donkey on which St. Nicholas would arrive. In many parts of the world, the shoes were replaced by stockings. Another important date is the 21st of December, St. Thomas Day, which is the shortest day or longest night of the year. In some parts of Germany, anyone arriving late for work on that day is given a cardboard Thomas donkey and becomes the subject of donkey jokes. But the major day of celebration comes on December 24th. In the cities, last minute shopping is underway. But in the countryside, quiet traditions begin to be observed. In Austria, farmers chalk the letters C for Casper, M for Melchior, B for Balthasar on the archway to their stable door in honour of the three wise men and to protect their herds from sickness in the coming year. In some countries, the plight of Mary and Joseph seeking shelter on the eve of Jesus being born is reenacted by villagers plodding through deep snow. Shops, theatres and concert halls are closed on this night to ensure that families spend the evening together. The evening meal is very special, and in Austria and the Czech Republic, traditional carp is served. The fish has been bred in centuries-old man-made ponds and has been sold live from the marketplaces of towns and villages across Europe. People have made their purchase prior to Christmas and kept the fish in tubs or even bathtubs in preparation for Christmas Eve. The evening dessert is usually very rich, being maybe chocolate or apricot cake or special cakes and cookies which have been laboriously prepared for the occasion. The end result is this and uh, to do it in Czech it's called like vanilla croissants. Oh, to do it these times there. 